my current pain points with Final Cut Pro, I would say would be the audio and collaboration tools. I would love it if they took the keyframe editor for motion and just slapped it on Final Cut Pro. I wish they had some sort of magic mask like DaVinci Resolve has. I love Premiere's remix tool. You know, when you stack color color grades, I want to be able to like click and just label, you know, smoothed out keyframes. That, that should just be in there. Whatever the rolls based mixer is, get that to us. On April 19th, 2022, more than 100 people from film and TV sent an open letter to Tim Cook talking about the current state of Final Cut Pro. Fast forward to the spring of 2023, the wave of many influential YouTubers switching to DaVinci Resolve, coupled with the lack of pretty much any update for 2023, has reignited the fire in the Final Cut Pro community. I wanted to understand the strange feeling that I was feeling and everybody else seemed to be having. So I fired up FaceTime and called all my Final Cut Pro friends. I think for me, the biggest thing is, is has been sort of the lack of feature updates over the years. I think for a long time, a lot of Final Cut Pro editors have wanted certain features and every update we get excited, hoping that those features are going to arrive and they don't. My pain point isn't necessarily in like, I want better color grading tools or why can't I open a compound clip in my timeline so that I don't lose the context of the edit when I'm inside the compound clip. I have a whole list of all those things, but really the pain point is not knowing what Apple intends to do with Final Cut Pro, feeling like since the transition to Apple Silicon, which is over two years now that it started, we just haven't gotten any really substantive updates to Final Cut Pro that are creating some serious conversations out there about how powerful of a piece of software it is. Right now, every update is a question mark. We don't even know, are we getting an update when WWDC drops? For excuses, people say, oh, they had to make Metal 2 compatibility. They had to do Apple Silicon. That's why they haven't developed Final Cut. Black Magic didn't have to do that? Of course they did. And look what they've done. Leaps and bounds ahead of Final Cut. Explosive growth. Again, like think of Apple's positioning where Black Magic Design is a professional, they sell professional hardware for professionals. Apple sells consumer electronics to consumers. When I think of professional, I think of someone doing this editing as a profession. So. It could be someone who is creating content on YouTube full time or someone who's doing that as a side hustle or just for fun and making some money out of it, right? All the way up to someone who is working on these Netflix films or documentary films or high end commercial work. That said, the difference is is in the mastery. So somebody in, in Hollywood is definitely going to have mastered the art of storytelling much more. So while the word professional maybe seems to be somebody who's up on this high pedestal of a very professional editor. This is, you know, they've spent 60 years video editing. I think that it's a much more toned down version than what we might first suspect when hearing that word. So the, the definition of pro has, of course, changed over the years as all of these tools have democratized something that had, you know, gatekeepers that held the gates closed you know, pretty strongly. The media arts, of course. I mean, I can I'm, I can literally live stream to the internet from my studio here with just a few basic tools. If you want to get a job at a particular agency, you use their tools, but you're going to be doing their work. If you want to get hired for your creativity, then do the best work that gets you noticed. Have you ever watched a movie? This is a question I ask a lot of people. Have you ever watched a movie and asked yourself, or turn to the person next to you and be like, that movie was edited on Premiere Pro. Or that movie was shot on uh, an Alexa. Nobody enjoying the art is going to care what the tool was. They're going to be like, wow, that looked great. That's it. The internet is a really 
painful and frustrating place. And I have to admit that I've contributed to this problem because I make people who are switching to DaVinci Resolve videos to get the clicks. And don't worry, I lose sleep over that at night, rest assured. I think it's it's pretty interesting to see it unfold. Um, big creators are switching to, to DaVinci and when I saw it happening, I thought, am I missing out on something? Do I need to be jumping ship as well? And I started watching a bunch of DaVinci uh, tutorials and I think it's incredible software, but I just, I don't feel like I have the time to put aside to master it and to get my editing up to the same level as I've got it now in, in Final Cut. If I ever got to a point where I just knew Resolve was a tool that would help me be faster, more efficient, kind of let go of the the <laughs> the drama in my relationship with Apple as it pertains to Final Cut Pro specifically, to where I didn't have to have that feeling of every Tuesday checking the App Store to see if there's an update, kind of reading all the rumor sites to try to see if there's a sense of something coming with Final Cut and knowing that if I switched to Resolve, I would just feel at ease knowing that they are regularly updating the app. They're allowing us to download betas if we want to and 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 be part of that community, trying to give feedback, test the app, etc. I think those those factors combined would, would, would lead to a, a strong consideration for a switch. So if DaVinci was Resolve was able to implement a more minimal interface and to implement a one-to-one -one ratio of the magnetic timeline, that would probably be the, the nail in the coffin for Final Cut for me. But also, it's really important to me to have the Final Cut Bro as my username. So no. <laughs> no. <laughs> if there are certain tools in DaVinci, like the magic mask that I can essentially rotoscope in the app, um, without having to leave the app. Those would be things that would be time savers that would make me be inclined to switch. And couple that with, let's say, Apple not releasing features, they'd, they'd come a breaking point. I don't think that the state of Final Cut Pro is unwarranted for us to be concerned. I don't know the numbers that Final Cut is doing. I don't know how many licenses they're selling on a yearly basis. I don't know how much money they're making from it. but. When you look at a company like Apple that makes hardware products, even though they have a lot of software that is really important to them and makes them a lot of money, I can't imagine that Final Cut is one of them. And generally speaking, Apple makes software when other companies can't do it well with their hardware. And unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic, they are doing that. So it would make absolute sense in my eyes if Final Cut did get the ax. I, I don't even want to put that out into the world because I really never want that to happen. But having been in this world, this tech business world, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they did from a purely financial standpoint. So I don't know. I get it. I get it. If they were going to abandon Final Cut, why in the world would they bring out an iPad version? But I understand people are concerned. I know I haven't spent extensive time in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, but track-based editing was always a pain in my ass. And I make this joke that Nick kind of invented the magnetic timeline in our room in Burbank before it existed, because he would sit there and go, why do I have to grab all the clips at the end of the timeline, slide them down to bring in one clip? Why can't Final Cut Pro just see that I want to bring a clip in and move it all down and then bring it back? Um, why, if I move this and it collides with another audio clip on a lower track, does it just not let me do it? It just collides clips and says, you can't do that. It's like, this all should be moving fluidly around each other so that you are just editing as fast as you can think. And then when they showed the magnetic timeline, we both were like, are you kidding? We're like, it's real. You can slide it, put down the timeline, things move out of the way.
I think Final Cut Pro is an amazing tool that is still underrated even 10 years after its release or 12 years now. If you're a young person in your 20s in college, the world's completely open to you. Definitely learn more than one NLE. But no matter which NLE you use, I would say learn Final Cut. It's just more fun. I think it's extremely valuable to content creators where speed is the most important element for their video editing software. And so I do not see Final Cut ever becoming obsolete for that reason alone. Final Cut is a is not only a great software to start out on, both in the fact that it's more intuitive in a way and Apple has designed it that way, but also like we've talked about the fact that it is advanced and can do most of what other editors editing softwares can do. So it, it uh, it's best of both worlds, in my opinion. I think the magnetic timeline in and of itself is truly a fantastic piece of intellectual property. And I think that that alone will keep it somewhat future proof for strictly being a arguably the best way to cut footage. So yeah, Final Cut Pro to me, if it were a friend or a colleague, would be somebody who is always there when you need them most, but they're definitely not there to go skydiving or partying with you. They don't have all the, the latest features. My friend Final Cut Pro doesn't have enough, uh, some of the skills that are needed to do particular jobs. And just like any job that I work on, I will hire the right people that are skilled in something that I need done. For me, Final Cut is that old friend of just comfort and I, man, I, I always just feel so at home when I come back to it. And that's probably because I learned editing with it and iMovie, but it is truly that like long time friend that just is always there for you and just provides you that sense of home. It's, it's a mutually beneficial relationship, but I do feel like at the moment I'm the one always calling to see how Final Cut's doing as opposed to Final Cut calling to see how I'm doing, if that makes sense, in a, a friendship kind of relationship. First word that came to mind was tumultuous. You would sort of observe the problems that they have, um, the maybe some of the shortcomings in the sense of like things that they could easily do to sort of like improve the stability of their life or, you know, or just make things a little bit easier for themselves. But at the same time, Final Cut Pro does so many amazing things that are so easy to take for granted. And I'm reminded of it every time I've tried to switch to a track-based editor, even ones that I have like familiarity with. That open letter gave me some sense of hope and optimism about the future of Final Cut. I think they've said that they would like to um, you know, give it the, the care that it needs essentially and give us the updates that we've been requesting. And I think if they're serious about that and they engage with Final Cut Pro users on all ends of the spectrum, so from the YouTube content creators all the way through to the pros who are using this, this wonderful app on things like Netflix documentaries and films and stuff, and in, start incorporating all the, f the feedback that they get. The Final Cut Pro is in a great, in a great place with one major update. That's all it will take. Apple just has to fulfill on their promise to, to do so. I think it just makes sense for them to put as much dedication in into it as they do their their phones and stuff. I know that's I'm super biased, of course, saying that, but uh, it makes sense to me. They would make their customer base happy and they would also get more people buying Apple products. The secretive nature of Apple is overblown a lot of times. Of course, some things are secret, but look, they preview their Mac OS at WWDC. There will be a beta version of Mac OS there. That's a lot of development. There's a lot of secrets in there, but they have a public beta showing of Mac OS at WWDC. I get the product secrecy, but I'm just like, I'm just like over the what we intend to do secrecy. Like keep it all a secret, but just like let us know what your where your head's at from time to time. Maybe work with influencers and YouTubers and everybody out there. But I think more importantly, if they just went on their website and had a little update of 
what's coming next month with Final Cut or what are we working on right now? I think that would go a long way in giving people confidence that they can stick with the software. Final Cut Pro might be on the verge of a large new wave of creators jumping over to experience the, the speed and the magnetic timeline um, that Final Cut Pro has. They've done so well with the iPhone to lure in all these creative uh, content creators that are 13 and older. But you know what? Those people are growing up now. They're the ones starting these companies that are going to be creating the next generation of amazing content. So give them the tools to do even better content. So short answer, yes, Final Cut Pro needs saving and they need to implement stuff knowing where the hardware, where the content, where all these users are going to be doing and the kind of content they're going to be creating five years from now and the help they'll need to do it. I think one thing that we will look out for is the very next updates of Final Cut. If in the next update we see some new features and everyone's quite excited about what's happening, that'll be a positive sign that they really have heard us and that they really are going to implement these new changes. I think if the next update and maybe the one that follows has nothing in it, um, we're going to feel like they didn't really listen in the first place. You know, just, you know, my hope for Final Cut Pro is, you know, the magic and the lightning in a bottle that Apple's managed to capture really throughout this its existence, but really since Steve Jobs came app. back in the late 90s, that that sense of excitement and magic and, um, and all that just kind of keeps going even under new leadership and as the Final Cut Pro team switches out um, employees and all that kind of stuff, that they just never lose sight of what makes what they do there, the culture, their values so special and that Final Cut Pro gives a little bit more of, of, that, of that part of what Apple stands for, um, even though we're a small but passionate you know, user base in the entire scheme of things with Apple. That would be it.